This is COVID-19 Seattle. I'm Dave Ross. And I'm Aaron Granillo. In just a minute, we'll get into the new mask requirement in Seattle and King County. But first, Dr. Anthony Fauci is warning Congress today that reopening the economy too soon will result in his words, needless suffering and death. Fauci is a member of the Coronavirus Task Force. He's charged with shaping the response to COVID-19. And he is testifying today via video conference, self-quarantining after a White House staffer tested positive for the virus. Actually, two White House staffers, I should say. And Washington Senator Patty Murray was among those on the panel. In her opening statement, she accused the president of lying about the government's response to the virus. The fact of the matter is President Trump has been more focused on fighting against the truth than fighting this virus. And Americans have sadly paid the price. And she also called for ramped up testing, but also said testing alone will not be enough to reopen our country. I guess we're going to find out sooner enough, Dave, if we are really prepared. Yes. And a lot will depend on what we do with the testing. I don't know if people understand yet that what testing means is that if you test positive, you will be asked who you were in contact with. Polling indicates that where you stand on this kind of tracing may depend on your politics because it shows that Democrats, about 68 percent, would comply with this kind of tracing, but only about 32 percent of Republicans Mm -hmm. would. Unless you can get some kind of decent compliance, of course, it's not going to have the desired effect of uh, controlling any outbreaks. The good news is that mask wearing seems to be remarkably effective. And and again, studies may differ on this, but um, I'm told that you don't have to have 100 percent compliance for it to be effective, but 80 percent would be uh, pretty good. So if you could achieve that, if you could get people comfortable enough with wearing masks, especially uh, indoors, then maybe we can cope with this, even if it doesn't completely disappear. I also want to play this soundbite from Washington Senator Patty Murray. She says the administration is failing to give students, parents and teachers the clear guidance they need to reopen schools. When should they wear masks? How do you run a school cafeteria or a school bus? And if they can't reopen classrooms, schools and families need to know we are working to ensure every student gets an education. And Dr. Fauci was also asked about this, um, and he said, you know, short of a uh, a vaccine or some sort of really positive treatment, uh, he's skeptical that uh, I think colleges at least uh, will return to normal come fall as well. Well, unless they can like, wear a mask. I mean, the, the, yeah. the mask question in schools depends on the age. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know that that uh, kids in kindergarten, for example, first, second grade, you might have trouble getting them to keep a, a mask on. Uh, later on, maybe a little bit, uh, maybe a little easier. Um, but part of the problem there, of course, is that kids can infect teachers. And so teachers are going to want to wear the kind of masks that would protect them from infection, which is a which, of course, is a much uh, higher quality mask. And for some reason, Aaron, as I mentioned yesterday, we just can't seem to get a handle on this uh, mask manufacturing uh, problem. And and I'll tell you one thing they need to investigate, because I know this exists. Uh, there was a, I talked to a scientist in Canada who's invented this, is a mask that doesn't just stop the virus, but kills it. One of the reasons we have such a mask problem is you can only use them if you're trying to actually use it to protect yourself as opposed to protecting others. You have to keep changing it. Well, there is a, a technology. It basically involves salt crystals, a certain kind of salt crystal, which when the virus droplet contacts it, it bursts the bubble and kills the virus almost instantly. So the mask doesn't have to be washed. You can use it 20 times as long as you can use one of the disposable ones. And uh, it's not advanced technology by any means, but it requires a, a new kind of manufacturing process. And uh, there's where you there's where you need your uh, Manhattan Project to start uh, circulating those because that would end the mask shortage almost overnight. Well, Seattle and King County are now urging everyone to wear a face mask in grocery stores, pharmacies and hardware stores. The health directive will take effect next Monday. King County Executive Dow Constantine, though, clarified you should not rush to buy those N95 masks. We're talking about the fabric mask or the scarf, the bandana, or uh, the disposable but non-medical mask that can cover your nose and mouth. Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin explained the reasoning behind this decision. Still, far too many people are getting the virus and people are continuing to die. And this is when we are in the most restricted situation we have. 
So, Dave, I, I know you've, you've said a lot about masks on this podcast, but uh, I heard both the mayor and Constantine yesterday that, you know, wearing a mask is essentially a sign that you care uh, that you care about people, that you're showing support for others around you. Uh, well, you know, I'm I'm not one for the kumbaya stuff, Aaron. <laughs> but I, I see it as a, I look at it as a transaction. I wear my mask so that you'll wear your mask, right? In exchange for me protecting you, you protect me. That's the way I look at it. Because that's the way that these these casual cloth masks are designed to work. Now, I suppose if we can't get people to comply with that, this kind of mutual protection, then we'll have to hold out for the, the surgical type masks, which are designed to protect you. But, of course, those are the ones that we are short of and, and can't figure out a way to manufacture uh, in quantity. So that's how I would look at it. I, I, I don't like shaming people. I, it's, a, it's a simple it's a simple transaction. Uh my inconvenience is matched by your inconvenience, and uh, together we protect each other. Let's not forget they tried this in Ohio. It didn't work there. Here's Governor Mike DeWine. It became very clear to me uh, after we put out the, the, the order that that was just a bridge too far, that people were, were not going to accept the government telling them what to do. That's the problem, right? It was an order. Some people just don't like the government ordering them how to conduct themselves. What what I think hurts is is this idea, and this came up when I was talking to David Farenthold from the Washington Post this morning. I asked him, so why isn't the president why doesn't the president wear a mask? And 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 he speculated, well, maybe because it looks weak. Mm. And I said to myself, why why would a mask look weak? The surgeons, the people on the front lines are wearing masks. That's like saying a guy with a gun looks weak. I mean because he's, he doesn't want to fight you with his fist, you know. Um, the, the mask is obviously not weak. A mask, a mask is what we do to be able to reopen the economy in the absence of a vaccine for the virus. And once the vaccine is here and you get, uh, what is it, 60% of the population taking it, then you can throw away your masks. In the meantime, I want to get out again, so wear your darn mask. <laughs> right. And I just want to clarify one thing, by the way, from the county and the city. Uh, there is no sort of legal penalty for not wearing a mask in public. No. Uh, they won't be fining you or arresting you. But they are, again, strongly encouraging you to wear one when you can't socially distance. And also, there is a requirement that you wear one on metro buses but again, they won't like kick you off the bus if yeah. you don't have one. There's requirements. You, do, you don't drink lattes on your bus, too, you know, so <laughs> which isn't uh, always enforced. Uh, so, yeah, just just wear your darn mask so I can go out again. Okay. If restaurants reopen in June, and that is still a big if, they'll have to meet 13 requirements to have dine in service. Now, the headline grabbing requirements is they'll need to create a daily log of all customers and maintain that daily log for 30 days. This involves writing down every customer's telephone or email contact info, as well as the time they were at the restaurant. Of course, this is meant to uh, aid in contact tracing should that become necessary. I have a feeling a lot of people are going to be writing down fake emails, though, and <laughs> probably <laughs> fake phone numbers. I don't know how effective this uh, this policy could, could be. What do you think, Dave? Yeah, that's true. But that also means then that if somebody in the restaurant shows up and tests positive, then you're not going to get the heads up that you ought to visit a hospital and get tested yourself. So it could, uh, it could cut both ways. Uh, I think you're probably right on that, that there, there's going to be a certain segment that just doesn't want that doesn't want to be traced, but it's not, I mean, it's not too crazy. First of all, all the bad guys have your personal information already as it is. You might as well give it to some of the good guys. And, um, and if you do want the alert, if you want the heads up, which could be crucial to protecting your family, then people might actually want to comply. By the way, here are some of the other rules that restaurants will have to meet. They have to have tables that are six feet apart. It is strongly suggested that if you leave your table, you put on a cloth face mask. No buffets, no salad bars, and menus and condiments must all be single use. The nice thing is that the that summer's coming, and uh, it would be smart if restaurants do whatever they can to create some sort of outside dining area. Because one thing we know from previous infection incidents is that your chances of avoiding infection when you are part of a group are much lower when you're outside and there's air circulation. The real problem is when you're inside and the same people are breathing <laughs> mostly the same air, that's when you get the kind of lengthy exposure that leads to a, um, a dose that can actually infect you.
We will be back tomorrow and every day after with a 10-minute rundown of the daily local news. You can subscribe to this podcast. You can also find our news coverage on MyNorthwest.com or listen live at 97.3 FM.